Topping our health lead today, New York State bracing for severe hospital staffing shortages because today is the deadline for all healthcare workers in the Empire State to be vaccinated against COVID or lose their jobs. 84% of all hospital employees are in compliance statewide, and that might sound high, but it also means tens of thousands of workers are refusing to get the shot. Joining me live to discuss CNN Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta. So Sanjay, what will happen to the quality of care at New York hospitals if the state suddenly loses tens of thousands of healthcare professionals? Well, I mean, it's going to obviously be affected. I mean, we've been talking a lot about uh, bed potential shortages uh, because of COVID patients, but really the problem, as you survey around the country, including what you're describing in New York, is, is staff. And it's, it's a significant problem. What happens is that hospitals will oftentimes then go on diversion, meaning they're not taking anything that is not emergent or urgent, uh, regularly scheduled operations, things that are not urgent operations, those things get postponed, uh, delays. So it just it has a really significant downstream effect. We're seeing that at hospitals here in Atlanta as well. That's that's part of the issue. Um, you know, the, the mandate in New York went out sort of middle of August, and they said by today, healthcare healthcare workers needed to be mandated, and that's why these numbers are now coming to light in terms of what these shortages may look like. Uh, New York City teachers also uh, were facing a mandate that right now it's on hold uh, in the courts. Mayor de, de Blasio in, of New York City, he today said an additional 7,000 Department of Education employees got their shots because of the mandate. That was obviously the intent of the health care mandate as well. Um, this comes after the CDC director said this morning that vaccine mandates do indeed result in people getting vaccinated, more people uh, getting vaccinated. So, so lay it out for our viewers. Do these mandates work? Because the, the health care shortage, uh, that seems troublesome. Yeah, I mean, in, this is a really interesting question, and there's data on this that even predates the pandemic, because the idea of healthcare workers being vaccinated, I think, makes sense to the vast majority of people. And if you dig into the data that you're talking about in New York, 95% of nurses vaccinated, 98 to 99% of doctors vaccinated, but there's obviously a lot of people who make up the healthcare workers. But go take a look at what, what was going on with flu, for example, the 2019-2020 flu season. And what you find that is across the board, about 80, 81% of people were vaccinated overall. This is healthcare workers we're talking about. But a significant difference, Jake, in places that mandated it, that had a requirement versus did not. 90, close to 94%, 95% in, in those areas that had mandates. 70% if it didn't exist. So, I mean, this surprises people. Jake, you go to hospital, you say, wait, 30% of your healthcare workers are not vaccinated, don't get a flu shot every year? That's true. That's been happening. But in places where the mandates are in place, it goes, you know, very high, mid 90s percent. So it'll make a difference. It'll come with, you know, um, I mean, some resistance or some people who will say, I am not going to continue working in this profession anymore if you mandate that I get a vaccine. And we're going to see at least, a, you know, a, a certain impact of that in, in states all around the country. Today, President Biden got his COVID booster shot, his third shot in front of the cameras, no less. Does the visual of the commander in chief getting his booster shot still hold the same weight uh, that it might have done at the beginning of the pandemic? Or, or even uh, if anybody out there knows of this history, the, the impact that Elvis, when he got his uh, polio shot, had on the country? <laughs> You know, it's, I think we're in a different phase of the pandemic now. It's interesting. I think in the beginning, there was a, a uh, obviously um, a, a lot of interest in, in seeing this. It was novel. I think there's sort of three messages now. It's a different dynamic. Uh, supply of the, of the vaccine is not an issue right now in the United States. There's plenty of supply. Two is I think, you know, seeing the president now get a booster sort of, I think, does remind people that, uh, you know, we're, we're not through this. I don't think people need reminding of that, but this is an endemic virus. It doesn't mean, by the way, that this is going to be every six months or even yearly. There are some vaccines for which you get your booster and you're covered for a long time, years, if not lifetime. We'll see what happens with COVID. But I think there's also this message, you know, which we've talked about in terms of equity around the world. Um, people in the United States getting boosters. There are places around the world that don't have enough first shots yet. The president talks about this a lot, saying, hey, we're trying to do our part here. But I think those are, those are sort of the three messages that, that really stuck out to me as I was watching that today. The CEO of Pfizer says that the company plans to apply within days for this FDA emergency use authorization for the COVID vaccine for children 5 to 11. Right now, less than half of eligible U.S. adolescents, 12 to 18, are fully vaccinated against COVID. Should we expect mm. 
that's also that, that insufficient number percentage for young children too? I think it might, sadly, Jake, be a little lower. I mean, let me show you sort of stepwise what you see as you sort of look at age groups here uh, for vaccination. It, it follows a stepwise pattern down, youngest at the left side of the screen, oldest at the right side of the screen. And as you said, uh, only about 50% have received at least one dose in that 12 to 15 range. Now, when you look at some of the polling going younger, five to 11 years old, you basically have a situation where about a quarter, this is parents now being polled, say a quarter would absolutely get it right away and about a quarter say definitely not. I mean, they're pretty polarized and 25% in, in, in each of those categories. And then it's the middle, you know, 40% sort of wait and see. That's what you hear for the five to 11 year old parents. Uh, and, and only if required, going back to the mandates, about 9%. This is, this is all, these are questions, you know, polls that are given to these parents ahead of any kind of authorization. They tend to change, as we saw with the adult vaccinations as well, once the vaccine is actually released and authorized. But I, my guess is it's going to be lower. It's going to continue that stepwise function, Jake. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, thanks. And don't miss Sanjay's new book, World War C, Lessons from the COVID-19 Pandemic and How to Prepare for the Next One. That comes out October 5th.